Hi, social studies colleagues, and thank you for watching this video where we will take a look at three different examples that I've collected in terms of what our school is looking for for authentic performance tasks. Before we start, I want to say thank you. All of us are here and working at our school because we love our students and because we want to help them best be prepared for the challenges of after school. And that's not just academically, uh, but that's socially and psychologically as well. We want to help our students best learn so that they can be successful when they leave us. And your love and dedication to teaching is, is humbling. I'm so privileged to work with all of you. So that being said, today we're gonna to be taking a look at some of these performance tasks. Now I also wanna say, we are probably doing this quite well. Uh, many of our summative assessments in our units are probably reflect, reflecting authentic performance tasks. So I would view this video more as a refresher or a confirmation of the good work you're already doing rather than an instructional tool telling you what these are. So with that in mind and that mindset in mind, let's take a look at some examples. Now, I want to highlight a few things in terms of authentic performance tasks. First, again, what are we looking for? And so I want to highlight this particular slide, which came from our authentic performance task committee that met last winter. And I specifically want to highlight that first little bullet point that authentic performance tasks allow students to transfer their knowledge to a new situation. It would be as if you were studying to be a mechanic and all you did was read texts on cars and car layouts and how to fix situations, but then a car is never brought into the shop and you have to diagnose what the problem is and fix it. We wanna make sure that our students are using the knowledge and skills that they've learned throughout the course of a unit in an authentic way. So that way we really truly understand that they have learned. We're getting that valuable data. Now, in terms of what kind of mindset or what kind of framing we can use to create an authentic performance task, Wiggins and McTighe created this acronym called GRASPS. And if we think about a summative assessment for a unit using GRASPS, we are going to be creating an authentic performance task. So GRASPS stands for a goal. So what's the challenge or what's the problem that students are going to be encountering? What do they have to overcome? Again, using the mechanic analogy, someone brings a, their car into the shop and says, my check engine light is on. All right, that's a problem. You have to diagnose why that check engine light is on. You have to be able to fix that and make sure the problem is, is completely solved. In terms of a role, well, what role are the students taking? In terms of social studies, they can be a historian who's examining multiple primary sources. They can be a debater over our understanding of a historical event. Uh, they can be a history writer trying to argue a particular point of view about a person, place, idea, or event. They can be a podcaster. One of the most successful and notable podcasts uh, is Hardcore History, done by a former journalist. So these are all roles that they can take as we're doing these authentic performance tasks. A is for audience. So who is actually the recipient of this thing that you're making? It could be the administration at the school. It could be professionals and real historians. It can be other students. It can be students of other grades. Who is this product that they're gonna be making actually made for? S stands for the situation or scenario. So that really provides the context to the problem or the challenge. If the scenario is that you wanna be starting a history podcast, looking at common misconceptions of different historical events, and the challenge is that you wanna make this podcast about the main reasons why the US Civil War started. That's the, uh, the situation provides the context for the problem. In terms of P, that's the actual thing they're making. What are they actually gonna be making at the end of that? Whether that's a video essay, a podcast, a written essay, a document-based question response, whether that's some sort of infographic or video product, what will students actually make at the end of this performance task? And lastly, the standards. And really what we're looking for there is how is it assessed? Are we creating a grading tool? Because that can be something that's rubric-based or checklist-based depending on the standard. Is our grading tool giving students an accurate representation of what we're expecting of them 
And is it giving us valuable feedback on if they've learned the, uh, what our standards are or not? Now, another thing that can be helpful, and this is a optional tool, is sometimes we have difficulty, and I certainly did early on in my career, looking at a standard from Arrow or Common Core and identifying, okay, how do I break that standard down into things students can actually do? So one thing, let's say that a standard, let's say in economics, is students will understand that price is a function of supply and demand. Well, I have to break that down into the types of thinking in terms of knowledge or skills that students need to demonstrate. Now, some of those have to be simple understanding thought processes because I can't ask students to apply or interpret things until they can explain basic concepts. Now, that wouldn't be a summative assessment. That'd be one of my formative assessments, but that's breaking down some of the thought processes students would have to go to. If you notice down below, we have higher order thinking skills like interpreting and applying. These would be connected more toward my summative assessment because those are things students actually do that shows that transfer of knowledge. And then if you can identify here are the types of thinking students need to identify, here's an assessment that can be paired with that that will show that thinking. Again, this is a little tool to help break down Common Core or Arrow standards if you happen to be in a situation where you don't quite know how students can show mastery on it, which is something that uh, many of us, especially new teachers, struggle with. And that's just part of learning. So let's take a look at some examples. Now, how you get to these is through the BFS curriculum folder, which I shared last year. And if you open it and go to UBD exemplars, you're gonna see two folders. Now, the resources and examples that I included last year or are in stage one, that comes from Trinity College's um, repository of units, but I want you to go to stage two. Now, if you notice when you go to stage two, you're gonna see a folder for every core discipline, including foreign language. I did include fine arts because fine arts have been doing this uh, for the last 100 or so years. So let's take a look at the social studies section. Now I've further broken this up into elementary school, middle and high school. So I'm gonna show you an example from elementary school, an example from high school, and an example from middle school that are all slightly different. And all of these are performance tasks. So let's take a look at the elementary school example. Now, the first thing we need to do is take a look at the standards, in our case, in our discipline, the standards that are being assessed here. Now, notice that these aren't Common Core or Aero standards. This is text. It's a different state standard. But you're going to see that same process play out. And you're also going to notice that these standards align with a lot of things that come up, especially in this example with Aero. So this particular standard says that students are going to explain, so that I love the, the action where it lets me know the kind of thinking that students need to do, explain the purpose for rules and laws in the home, school, and community. So what's the purpose of laws? It's a great background for advanced studies they'd be doing in middle and high school. And identify rules and laws that establish order, provide security, and manage conflict. So two things, why do rules exist? And how do those rules establish order, provide security, and manage conflicts? How does it keep us, how rules and laws keep us safe? That's great. So we need to see a assessment that reflects those two things. So we're going to scroll down to stage two. And again, this is going to be much more broad when you create the task sheet for students. And this does not include the rubric, but I want you to look at the narrative on what this teacher is going to be asking their students to do. And we're going to see if it aligns with the standards. So please pause the video and read that narrative. Okay. Now, one thing I really like about this example of the performance task is it's actually going to be conducted at the school during recess. So it's, it's actually changing the environment of the school. And, and the school's a great place to try some things, to do some of these experiential learning situations. Now, if you notice that students are creating rules, so we are connecting it back to the school and our, and our environmental community, or sorry, our educational community. And then they're talking about what makes a rule good, what makes a rule bad, what makes it safe and fair, so they're hitting this other section. So this seems to be a performance task that connects to the two goals this teacher had identified. It's an authentic way, they're doing something experiential, they have to apply their knowledge to this new situation, and 
it's engaging. So this is absolutely a wonderful performance task idea for elementary school. Now, uh, if you're an elementary teacher watching this, you do not need to see the next two examples. They're from the high school, but if you'd like to see some examples and see how you can adapt them to elementary school, you can. So let's take a look at example two. So this is a middle school example from sixth grade. So in this particular unit, the teacher has two standards, both are arrow. So examine the interaction between people and the environment and understand how people both shape and are shaped by the environment that they live in. So people interact with the environment because people are interacting with their environment, that changes them and that changes the environment. The second standard that the teacher is looking at is to describe ways that human events have influenced and been influenced by physical and human geographic conditions in local, regional, national, and global settings. So this isn't just interacting with the environment. Now we're talking a little bit about human geography how the geography of a place, uh, not just the physical conditions, but the human conditions, the cultures that are restricted within a geographic boundary uh, affect different people. So we're looking at the environment itself and how those environmental conditions reflect culture and how that culture shapes a civilization. So with that being said, I'm just gonna scroll down here for you and I'm gonna let you pause it, take a look at the background section and the process section. So pause the video and do that now. Okay, I'm just going to, I'm going to go to the second section so we can finish this off. So you can pause this and read this. Okay, so this is something in terms of performance task you may not think initially when it comes to something being authentic. You're creating some sort of survival guide. But the whole point of surviving a situation is understanding the environment that you're in, writing something that can help other people. Is it a bit of a fantastical situation? Yes, but are survival guides written? Yes, are guidebooks written about different places around the world? Lonely Planet, for instance. Yeah, so it's taking that idea and that type of thinking that a historian has to think about and converts it into something that students can make. Now, one really interesting thing is there's not much in terms of how students need to do this. It's not telling them what a survival guide specifically needs to look like or colors or pictures. It's saying, here's the information that we want. And we want a good faith effort in terms of its construction, but what's being assessed is the content and the knowledge that's being transferred here. Let's take a look at a high school example. Now, I use this particular high school example because this is something you may think of as a traditional assessment that is absolutely still an authentic performance task. Again, something that's really important in social studies is can you write? Can you write convincing argument so that your readers believe what you're trying to argue about a historical time period, a person, a place, or an event? This not only reflects academic writing, but historical narratives that are written and sold. So this, these particular set of common core standards are looking at argumentative writing. And it's talking about um, creating claims, developing counterclaims, having a clear line of reasoning in terms of your communication, your tone and sentence structure, having, having a formal style, using evidence to support claims, and having a concluding section that convinces your reader. So this is, these are all the key points of argumentative writing. And so the authentic performance test that students will be performing is a 1,250 to 2,000 word argumentative essay. Now again, if you wanna read the background and process, you can pause here and read it. Okay, I'll also go to the second page. If you wanna take a look at that, you can pause that as well. Okay. Now, this, I include this example because this is a fairly traditional assessment, but the reason why this assessment was created and why it stands the test of time is because you have to be able to write convincingly. You have to be able to communicate your thoughts in writing, and that's not only going to help you be successful if you study social studies as a discipline after school, but it's going to be important in any career that you have, the ability to communicate with colleagues or in your life, being able to communicate with family members, friends, and loved ones. So I included this particular example in there for that as well. This also would include things like document-based question essay responses, which is a wonderful example of authentic performance tasks. 
Now, I know I only looked at one example per grade, but I did want to take some time and walk you through these. If you take a look at the other examples and you have some questions or you feel like I was a little confusing in some things that I said in this video, again, I did it all in one take, so maybe I misspoke, please let me know. Uh, I am here to provide you the resources and the training to make sure that you are ready to do the best job you possibly can for your students so that uh, we can help them be successful. So I wanna partner with you on that. So please reach out if there is anything I can do in terms of questions or individual conversations or one-on-one -on -one instructional coaching. How can I help you uh, better understand what we're looking for for authentic performance tasks? Again, thank you for your time. Enjoy the summer.